Now, in this video, we'll learn about the cumulative distribution formula, and we'll do this for discrete random variables x, which follow a binomial distribution. Now, the thing is, we'll be using the cumulative distribution formula as soon as we're looking for the probability of x being less than or equal to some value. For instance, if I'm flipping a coin, say, five times, I may be interested in finding the probability of obtaining three tails or less. And that's slightly different to being asked to find the probability of obtaining exactly three tails. So as we can see here, we'll be interested in finding the probability of x being less than or equal to some value r. Now the formula for this is the following. We can see we have this sum here. Now you can look at this, it looks rather complicated. All that's really saying is that the probability of x being less than or equal to some value r is equal to the sum of the following probabilities. Now, for instance, let's say I'm interested in finding the probability of obtaining three tails or less when I flip a coin, say, five times. Then what this is saying is that the probability of x being less than or equal to three will be equal to probability of x being equal to zero plus the probability of x being equal to one plus the probability of x being equal to two plus the probability of x being equal to three. So that's the idea here. And there's a key word you'll need to remember. As soon as you see less than in an exam question or in a quiz question, more often than not, you're going to be dealing with the cumulative distribution formula. Now let's go right ahead and see a couple of examples. Okay, we're told that a biased coin is such that the probability of obtaining tails is 0 0.3. We're told that the coin is flipped five times and we're asked what is the probability of obtaining less than three tails. Now looking at this, it's clear that we're dealing with a binomial distribution here. We can define the discrete random variable capital X as being the number of tails we obtain. So let's just write capital X equals to number of tails. We're flipping the coin five times, so that's five trials, and we can say n equals to five. We know that the probability of obtaining tails, which is a success in this case, is 0 0.3. So we can go ahead and write p is equal to 0 0.3. And therefore, the probability of a loss is the same as the probability of flipping heads. So that would be Q equals to 1 minus 0 0.3, which is 0 0.7. Also worth pointing out, the discrete random variable X can equal to either 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. Those are the different values x can be equal to. And the reason for that is because remember, capital X is the number of tails we obtain. So if we flip a coin five times, we'll either get no tails at all, so x equals zero, one tail, that's one, two tails, three tails, four tails, or five tails. So that's all the different values x could possibly take. Now, what we're interested in here is looking at the question, the probability of obtaining less than three tails. Now, one thing here is that for x to be less than three, since x can be zero, one, two, three, four, or five, for x to be less than three, that means that x has to be less than or equal to two. So in fact, the probability that we're looking for here is probability of x being less than or equal to two. And now we can remind ourselves of the cumulative distribution formula, which is right here. And replacing all the different values we see here, we can write that this equals to the sum from lowercase x equals to zero up to two of the probability of x being equal to lowercase x. Now writing out this sum, that leads to the following. That's equal to the probability of x being equal to zero plus the probability of x being equal to one, plus the probability of x equals to two. So we have three probabilities to add up here. And for each of these probabilities, we can use the well-known formula, which we show here, the probability of x being equal to r. Now in this case, r 
for each of these probabilities is 0, 1, 2, and that's it. And n is the number of trials, so n is always going to be 5. So writing this out, we have this equals to 5, 0, times 0 0.3 to the power of 0, times 0 0.7 to the power of 5, plus 5, 1, times 0 0.3 to the power of 1, times 0 0.7 to the power of 4, plus 5, 2, times 0 0.3 to the power of 2, times 0 0.7 to the power of 3. And using our calculator to do this, we find that this equals to 0 0.83692. So rounding to three significant figures, the probability of x being less than or equal to 2 is equal to 0 0.837. And there we go. We've now found the probability of obtaining less than three tails using the cumulative distribution formula. Now, in this case, we did everything by hand, or we used the calculator just to calculate these values. But very often, we'll end up with examples in which there are thousands of trials, and we'll need to know how to do this with a calculator. And the following example highlights just that. In this case, we're told that the company Pharma Magic produces aspirins. Five in every thousand aspirins produced is poorly manufactured in the sense that its shape doesn't match the packaging designed to carry it and therefore cannot be sold and is thrown away. On Monday, Pharma Magic plans to produce 5,000 aspirins. What is the probability that less than 10 aspirins will have to be thrown away? Now, in this case, again, we're definitely dealing with a binomial distribution. We can define capital X, our discrete random variable, as being the number of faulty or just bad aspirins. So aspirins that we have to throw away and can't sell. Now, in this case, we're looking at the production of 5,000 aspirins. So essentially, n is equal to 5,000. So we can write n equals to 5,000. And we know that the probability of any aspirin being faulty is 5 in every 1,000. So that's p is equal to 5 out of a 1,000. That's the probability of a win or of a success. And 5 divided by 1,000, well, let's see, that's 0 0.005. Consequently, the probability of an aspirin not being faulty, which is the probability of a loss in this case, is 1 minus 0 0.005, and that's 0 0.995. Now, we're interested in, in there being less than 10 aspirins, which need to be thrown away. So in other words, the probability we're looking for here is probability of X being less than 10. And now X, remember, the number of bad aspirins can be equal to, because there are 5,000 trials, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth, all the way up to 5,000. And for X to be less than 10, that means that we're looking for x less than or equal to 9. So we're interested in the probability of x less than or equal to 9. Now, using the cumulative distribution formula, we can say that this equals to the sum from x equals to 0 up to 9 of p of x being equal to lowercase x. And that would equal to the probability of x equals to 0 plus the probability of x equal to 1 plus etc etc plus the probability of x equals to 9. Now that's 10 probabilities to calculate. Now do, we could do that of course by hand but that would take a very long time. The key thing to realize here and to learn I should say is all of our calculators our graphical display calculators have a built-in function which typically is called the binomial CDF. You want to make sure you find that on your calculator. And so using the binomial CDF, we're typically asked for a lower bound and an upper bound. The lower bound of the binomial CDF is this value here, the first probability we wish to, we wish to consider. So our lower bound for x is 0. 
our upper bound is 9. So definitely, we type lower bound equals 0, upper bound equals to 9. We'll also be asked for the probability of a success, which in this case will be 0 0.05. Plugging that in the calculator and calculating, we quickly find that the probability of x being less than 10 equals to 0 0.000216. And that's how we calculate probabilities using the cumulative distribution formula. Make sure to find this function on your calculator. Very frequently in, in exam questions, we're asked to find probabilities in which there are thousands, even tens of thousands of trials, which is not feasible to do by hand. You definitely want to look for binomial CDF. And there we go. I hope that helps.